start streaming. Get patience, Darren. Oh, jeez. I don't know how to get this to your page or to share it. Don't even worry about it. Wow. It's, it's not on. It's not on your page. Don't worry about it. <sighs> Look, I'm just trying to get this thing going. You're supposed to do it the same thing every time. I know, but it's not. It, look. No, with the posting. All right, so I believe we're finally live and everybody can see us now. There it says. There we go. Join us live. Woo you did it. Yeah. Oh, Yay. my goodness. It only, it, only, it only took us 30 minutes. Y'all, yeah. I am so sorry. <laughs> I have had the most technical difficulties today in my life. Get up. You can't go to sleep. I don't think we've had. 30 minutes. Yeah, that's a long time. This is a long time. It's been more than 30 minutes. But we're good. <laughs> we're going. And we about to roll. So, um, this video has ended. <laughs> so, what's the question of the day? It's ah! I said it ended. But I guess it's not ended. Okay. Somebody else is taking the place of being on the stories. What's the question of the day? Okay, so hold up. Oh, that the other one has ended. But y'all can see me live now, Yeah, right? you're still here. Okay, I'm still live. All right. So, what's up? Welcome, everybody, to P-Town First, the Sunday edition. Today is Sunday, March the 1st, 2020. I'm Pastor Darren Moore, coming to you live from Portsmouth, Virginia. Again, I apologize, because we have been having so many difficulties this morning. Um... This is just ridiculous and crazy. I've never had anything this crazy. But uh, we're finally on. So for those who are checking this out, we ask you to do me a favor, press the share button. Um, share it to the stream, start your watch party. You know, do what we do, because we about to go in. Um, man, I just can't believe this has been so crazy. It's all right. Well, first, we definitely going to start off in a word of prayer. Mm -hmm. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you and bless your name. We pray right now for this day, Lord God, against every level of distraction, every level of demonic interference, Lord God. Father, that this word may go forth in full riches. Father, we pray, God, for everybody that's going to watch this broadcast now and those who are going to check it out later. And we pray, God, that they'll find encouragement and strength. And Lord, that we'll really adhere and listen to your word. That it might be a reminder and a beacon to us of what your word says. We thank him and give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So what's right. the question of the day? So the question of the day is, when have you been exploited? Because of your wealth. Because of your lack of wealth yeah. or resources. When have you been exploited because of your lack of wealth or resources? What's that mean? Basically, when have you been scammed, I think. No, not, it's mm -hmm. even more than that. So what's it mean? It means to take advantage of you. So yeah, like since you're like rich and then people lack of, just want to hang lack, out with no. you. Oh. Oh, lack. Uh, so you're not rich. You're not rich. Oh. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and share one. Um, Not just me per se, but I would say... Uh, my ancestors, mm -hmm. they were exploited for their labors through the unjust, inhumane mm -hmm. institution of slavery. How's that for one? Mm -hmm. Would y'all agree? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I want us to think about that today as we're going in. And do me a favor, make sure y'all share the page too. So again, we're not sure who's checking us out today or when they will, but um, today we're definitely going to get into some stuff. So with uh, if you've never joined us before, P-Town Fresh is a unique opportunity where we connect with God, we utilize technology, um, and we are about to definitely get it in today, okay? So with that, we've been studying in the book of James, and we've been studying through James chapter 4, but now we have actually reached James chapter 5. And Yay. James chapter 5 is the last chapter of James. Yay, give it Yay, up. Yay, we finally made it. Yay, we did chapter 19. <laughs> and so, go somewhere else. as we finally made it, which is great, but we also, um, and but I'm really uh, excited about this lesson here. And here we have a slight, I guess, a change of pace in the book of James. So, um, 
Let's go ahead and start reading. Uh, begins in James chapter 5, verse 1. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver are corrupted, are corroded, excuse me, and the corrosion will be a witness against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasures in the last days. Indeed, the wages of the laborers who know your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out. And the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. You have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. You have fattened your hearts as a, in a day of slaughter. You have condemned. You have murdered the just. He does not resist you. Wow. So what are your thoughts about that? That's pretty rough. Mm -hmm. Sounds kind of harsh, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to begin um, talking about, of course, first verse one. And just to give you a, a little context, so far up to the James chapter four, James has been giving a lot of practical instruction and telling us how to use wisdom when talking, um, how to make sure we control ourselves. Um, making sure that we use proper judgment mm -hmm. and, you know, several other things. But here now we're continuing on. And as we're looking at this part, it gets a little bit different because James now switches to a different tone for James chapter five. He just breaks out and says, come now, you rich. And it's almost like he breaks out in this prophetic exhortation. Um, or warning. And so to begin to start out with, let's look at that first verse. He says what? Come now, you what? Rich. You rich. Weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. So, first off, the word rich simply means, well, wealthy, or right? it comes from the root word of being full, so or to be filled. So, biblically, in this case, when he's saying rich, he's mm -hmm. saying not just being full, but being what? Overfull. Okay? And so, as we understand that, then, why should we have, why should God have or demonstrate this tone towards the rich? Mm, maybe I said because they have pride. He said what? Pride. Because they have pride? Okay. All right, of, pride, of a prideful position. Okay, good. Why else? Pride. That's not Why do we think God would take this tone against the rich? Does this uh, sound like a nice tone? Mm -mm. No. Maybe because uh, maybe they're manipulating the poor. Well. Exactly. Say that again, DJ. Because they were manipulating the poor people. Because they were manipulating the poor and taking advantage of them. Or we use a word today called exploit. All right. So because and why? Because if you look at the definition of rich in the Greek, it means to be full already. Mm -hmm. And then what? Have more. So imagine and, and, and let's just think about this. Imagine having a cup and your cup is full. But then what do you do? You ask for what? More you ask for more. Does that make sense? Because what's going to happen? You're going to overflow. It's going to overflow. You have more than what you need. But, and the thing is, the people, you know, the people who really need it aren't going to be able to use it. Yeah. All right. And so the next part says what? Weep and how for your miseries that are coming upon you. Mm. So what should the attitude or the emotional response be of the rich? You come on up. You let's get some room. They should uh, be they make weeping. Some room they should be weeping. They should be weeping. All right. So their attitude should be one of lament, okay, or sorrow. Mm -hmm. All right. And so the word for lament means, of, of course, to to sorrow, to cry, um, really to mourn. Mm -hmm. And so you know it's an intense mourn. And then as we look at the other part of it. 
It says to weep and what? How? How? Okay. So are we? We're not talking about like howling at the moon and that type of thing. But what we're talking about is that deep guttural response, that death wail. We're talking about the response of a mother when she finds out that her only son has just been violently gunned down. Mm -hmm. Are, are y'all understanding? Mm -hmm. So this is that, that the serious nature and the response that should be from the rich. Okay? That loud cry. That's the emotional wave that's coming for the rich. That's serious, isn't it? Yep. And I want to say what's up to Michelle Broussard and Isaiah Spate. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, we had some technical difficulties today getting started. Also, we ask anybody who's checking us out to do me a favor and press that share button or start a watch party or <coughs> you know, all those things that we do. So now, as we're looking at the next thing, he says what? He says, weep and howl for your what? Your miseries that are coming upon you. So when we're talking about misery, that Greek word is teleporia. And basically, after a bit of studying, um, that word, the way it breaks down, it's really the weight mm -hmm. of the heavy piercing tribe. Okay? That's what misery is. So... In, in other words, because what it's talking about it comes from two things. One word talks about the weight of. And then the other word talks about the piercing of. Okay, the experience. Which literally means going on to the other side. So literally, it's like they're going to be, the pain of this that they're going to go through, it's going to feel like they're being stabbed. Mm -hmm. That This is serious, isn't it? This is the trial that's coming for them. And it, so this isn't a light thing in the least. Here's a question. What would you say is God's emotional feeling when writing this passage? You mean like towards the, uh, mm -hmm. the rich? Yeah. What are his, what are his emotional state? What's he, how's he feeling? You mean like you're doing wrong. You uh, mourn. Okay. Good. What else? He's very furious at them. He's very furious at them. Excellent. All right. Anything else? Is he happy? No. No. It's very not, a, not in the least. All right. So as we're looking at this part and continuing on, I have a question to think about. Think about how many people that over the years since this verse have, has been written mm -hmm. and has acquired a significant amount of wealth or became rich but from ill-gotten and exploitation exploit, exploited means meaning that they cheated, they defrauded they took advantage of imagine if they had responded properly to this verse. Wow. Hmm. Can you imagine how our history could have been changed? changed yeah. Look, I, I, I'll throw one out there. Just to think of. You know. I wonder if. Now, now we realize that America. Is supposed to have been founded on. The principle of what? Religious freedom. freedom. Right. And so they came here to, quote, unquote, practice their Christianity. However, and the same people who said that they were doing this, the same people decided to enslave. They said, you know what, we want to make some more money. So, you know what, let's start this uh, transatlantic slave trade here. Let, let's get some free labor. And so... And, and, and treat them like the animal, like animals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, literally, but these same people also claimed 
the banner of Christianity. Are, are, are you all understanding? So my, my question is, what if those slave masters, I wonder what happened when those slave masters were having their little Bible study <laughs> with their families and singing their songs in the big houses. I told you, they skipped this part of the Bible. They didn't read that. And, and, and read to this part. So you know what? It. This week, family, we're going to read to James. Mm. And, and imagine what happened. I wonder what happened if they, you know, and, and here's a question. Why is it that we, how many times have you heard this passage preached on a Sunday? Never. Mm, once and a half. All right. The, the, why? Because this type of message is two things that you won't hear that often. Now, some might, don't get me wrong, there may be some pastors that preach this, but this is one, crowd control and account control. Why? Because when you start talking about how people ought to spend their money, mm -hmm. especially the rich people, <coughs> who are the people many times who cause the church to continue to go, you know, those people who are about, have their names on the pews, or those people who have those blocks, you know, yeah. uh, uh, imagine how they'll feel, On the parking space. you know, if, if you begin to start saying stuff like that to them. But this is what the word says. This ain't me. Y'all with me? Yeah. All right. And welcome to Aaron World Santana and also Keontae the year. So again, anybody checking this out, do me a favor, press that share button on your page. So, looking at verse 2, your riches are what? They have great investment property, great investment uh, potential, right? Mm -hmm. No, it says your riches are what? Corrupted. Corrupted. And your garments are moth-eaten. Mm. Wow. So, so we're really getting deep in this thing now. Because when he's saying your riches are corrupted, the Greek word there is sepo, which means rotten, to destroy. So you got riches, but they're what? They're rotten. So uh, let me put this in perspective. Imagine you come into someone's house, you know, coming for a visit, and they're like, oh, man. Look, would you like some, some fruit? I have some wonderful fruit, you know, from our fruit tree, mm -hmm. uh, fruit trees that we got. Matter of fact, I got a big old basket of it. You can take whatever you want. That's true. And so you're excited about going there, right? You're like, man, I can get me an orange, might be able to get me an apple, maybe even some pears, maybe something fancy, fancy like a guava, mm -hmm. or whatever the case is, a mango. Juice. However, but when you get to the basket of fruit, it's a big, giant basket of fruit. But it's all, but it's all rotten with worms crawling mm. through it. Mm. Yuck. That's literally what happened. Or what will happen. That, that's serious, isn't it? Mm. He's saying this is what's going to happen to your riches. Look at verse 3. Your gold and your, silver. and your silver are what? Corroded. And the corrosion will be a witness against you. And will eat your flesh like fire. Mm. So you have, eat so your flesh you know like fire. What you're saying? You have on your necklace, and your necklace is gonna <coughs> eat your skin. So we talking worse Ew. than like so. So all right, let, let's put this in perspective. And he says, and you have eat, heaped up treasure in the last days. Now, some of us, you know, may not have always been of means and had a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And some of us, you know, may have tried to look the part but not having the money to play the part or be the part. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you may have seen some people with those nice, you know, everybody else had those nice herringbone or gold chains, nice. and you decided you wanted nice. to get one too. But yours just happened to be a couple of layers thin. <laughs> and, and, and yours, you know, and so now you're rocking yours, and but you don't, you know, what they don't know is when you rock yours, you got an expiration date on yours. Because if you sweat too much, <laughs> your neck is, or if you leave it on too long, it turns start turning green. 
You, you, are y'all understanding? So literally, that's what it is. He's saying, he said, your gold and your silver are corroded. But this is worse. This is literally rust. So, you know, the, the word that the King James uses the word cankered. All right. And so which means to or the Greek word is katiu, which means to rust over or to cover with rust. And literally, and, and when you begin to get a little bit deeper, that root word for rust comes from the word eos, which means poison. Like the poison of snakes. The poison of asps is under their lips. So literally when he's talking about this rust, you know, rust is like poison for metal. Rust is poison for gold. You can be rich, but if some of your gold starts to rust, then what ends up happening? It spreads. Because just like your car, if one you get one part of your car that's rusty, then what happens? That rust what? It spreads. That's why you have to make sure you treat it. Mm -hmm. So, the same poison in the rust will eat your flesh. Mm. Now, this isn't to be just taken literally, but this is prophetic. This is a prophetic message. This is serious. And then he says, what? He says, you have heaped up treasure in the what? In the last days. Your end is soon coming. Man, this is a serious indictment, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So here's a question. What's wrong with being rich? Why is God mad? Is he mad at all the rich people? No. Is it okay for you to decide to become rich or be rich? Yeah. So, so what's what's the problem here? Sean? They're they're basically not like doing what God says while they're like rich. So basically like they're they're bragging or boasting about things and they're not doing the right things when God provided them with everything they have. Okay. Well, that's one part, which is good. Mm -hmm. Excellent, Shauna. But there's one part even more. To find out, let's continue reading. Again, anybody, um, we welcome everybody that's with us. Anybody that's checking us out, we ask you to do me a favor, just press that share button. Um, you know, give us a comment, give us a like, let us know you, uh, you're out there checking us out, thumbs up, heart or something. So, as we're looking at this, so let's check this part out here, alright? So, verse 4 says what? And this is where it's really going to start getting, we're about to break some stuff down. Verse 4 says, indeed. The wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, hmm. cry out. And the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of Sabah. All right. So now we're getting deep. So I want to share a, a verse with you. Uh, Deuteronomy 24, verse 14 through 15. You shall not oppress a hired servant who is poor and needy, mm. whether one of your brethren or one of the aliens or foreigners who is in your land within the gates, within your gates. So that means any of the, uh-oh, watch this. When you see aliens within your gates, aliens is foreign. So a, a, a more familiar term we might have is immigrant. Mm. Mm. Whether by choice or not. Each day you shall what? Give him his wages. And not let the sun go down on it. For he is, po he is poor. And has his heart. 
pardon me, and has set his heart on it. So he doesn't have enough savings in storage and in the storehouse. Mm -hmm. So he has to eat from what? Day to day. day. Mm -hmm. So he needs his coins that day. He needs his, not even coins, because back then, it, it, what he was doing, his job was to farm the field. Mm -hmm. And so he needed, when it came to harvest time, he needed his pay that day. Because his family was hungry and dependent upon him. He said, unless he cry out against you to the Lord, and it be sin to you. So, as we see, this, this isn't just something new. This isn't a new concept. This has existed even back in Deuteronomy in the Old Testament. And so, listen to this again. Indeed, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out. And the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. That again is James chapter um, five. five. Okay, verse four. So, and that word mowed means the same thing as reaped or harvested. And so, what happens, or what's happening here in this case, what James is talking about, is that the same harvest that made the rich property owners and the business owners and the manufacturers rich the same harvest that made them rich you don't share it with the people that brought the harvest then the word kept back by fraud that is the Greek word aposterio which means to defraud, to rob, to despoil, to destitute. Literally, what's happening is you're cheating them of their earned amount of wages. Mm -hmm. And as a result, you're making them destitute and poor. You're making them poor, making you richer. The rich get richer. And what? The poor get poor. The poor get poor. How many of y'all have heard that saying? Yeah, plenty of times. But I'm telling you, it should not be so. So, let's take a look at some of this stuff in real life. Shall we? So, I did a little bit of studying. And, and, and the question I decided to ask is where and when does or has this labor or financial exploitation occurred? Hey, what's up, Mike Jordan? Welcome, bro. Welcome, brother. So, as we're looking at this, when has this exploitation of the poorer workers, as we're reading in James chapter uh, 5, for those who are just joining us, verses 1 through 6, where has this exploitation occurred? All right, that the Bible said that James that James said, look, <laughs> it, it, it is going to be a rough day coming for you. Number one, let's talk about the prisons. Okay, so uh, well, well, first of all, well, let's yeah, let's talk about well, let's go slavery first. Mm -hmm. Slavery, as we've already mentioned, it was an industry literal financial industry mm -hmm. that boosted the textile stocks of the U.S. amongst the world. And because of that, we had so many people getting rich mm -hmm. off of the stocks of cotton and also tobacco. And then what was happening? Who were the people that literally were bringing in the harvest? The slaves. The slaves. And how much were they paid? Probably nothing. 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 They were defrauded. And what did the Bible just tell us? What did it just say? It said what? Those who, and once again, indeed the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields or harvested your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out. They were defrauded. They were cheated. As a matter of fact, they didn't get anything even after the institute, institution of slavery ended and they were promised because they said, you know what, it, it, it's like starting a race and everybody else has a head start. 
and you're you're all the way back. But not only do you are you is everyone else starting before you, but they tied your shoes together, and then you don't even have any shoes. You expected to run the same race as everybody else. So they were promised what reparations or forty acres and a mule, but have never received. So for those of African descent who are making some level of, of uh, stride in society, I, I say that's commendable. Mm -hmm. Especially considering that, that everyone else started with a serious head start. But I'm not just going to go there. Let's talk about the prisons. prisons? Alright. Let's, let's talk about prisons and let's talk about the whole commerce system and the whole industry that's in prisons. See, I, I did a little bit of research. Okay? So, um, let me scroll down to my, my prison. Okay, here we go. Do you know that, does anyone know what the average hourly wage would be for a prisoner in Virginia? What's, what's, what's your guess? Like I'm curious. 30 cent or 50 cent? 30 cent, 50 cent? Oh, I was thinking more than that. I was thinking like 2 to 5 dollars. You think like 2 to 5 dollars? No, it's not a What do you think, Ulysses? Oh, let's, what do you think, Ulysses? Where was this person said? What? Uh, like 30 70 cent, cent 30 cent. Yeah. All right. Is it really in the cents? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So, literally, and see, and, and, and y'all really want to get beat, then you can take a look at literally even... Um, the of course as we you're familiar with the Thirteenth Amendment and the Thirteenth Amendment which quote unquote abolished slavery except <laughs> for those who are in prison and incarcerated. So literally, they're still in the state. Watch this: they still haven't had their shackles removed from them. The shackles of slavery are still holding them back. And then when we got issues and things that are 86. that. Compound that from mandatory minimums, sentencing, you know, to the war on drugs and all of this stuff, you know, it, it just is it's crazy. But let, let's just talk for a moment. All right. So, Virginia. The average wage, so regular jobs, okay, what we would say are non industry. So, the where is it? Yeah. Okay, here we go. 27 cents. 40 up to, and the, the lowest 27, high is 45. In state-owned businesses, or what we call correctional industries, the lowest 55 and the highest 80. Now, I want you to, so I want you to think about this for a moment, okay? Um, there's a couple of things that are going on in here. So when they are receiving these wages, why is this just... So what do they do? Like, what kind of job? Okay, I'm glad you asked. So there's several types of industry or work that occurs in the prison. First off, there's one where they do the typical facility management. Okay? So janitorial stuff, mm -hmm. cooking... Grounds labor, groundskeeping, washing, clothes. washing, painting, all of this. And so, but I want you to think about something. If they hired someone from the outside, pay them more. they would pay them at $7 least $7 what? $7 at least $7.25. Now, but in the prison, they pay them. Hmm. Sense. Now, some of you might be like, well, you know what? And what's up? Welcome, Gigi. Some of you might be like, well, you know what? That's fine. That, you know, they're in prison. They don't need money. But when you understand, so first off, and, and like I said, I did look a little bit of research and not a lot. Um, and But just to also give you a comparison, um, if you look into North Carolina, Non-industry, the low is five cents an hour. That's our neighboring state. Where? Where? In North yeah. Carolina? North Carolina. Five cents. Five cents. What you going to do with five cents? 
On here it says the, Mississippi says zero. The high is 38. You don't get said anything. Zero. Alabama, Mississippi, Florida, Arkansas. Exactly. It's zero. There are some states within our wonderful United States of America where the prisoners don't even get paid. Say, what are those states again? Uh, let, let me see. It is uh, Alabama. Yep. Al South Carolina. Arkansas. All the southern Texas, states. Texas. Florida. I think, was it Oklahoma? Those are the southern states. Notice no, that. Oklahoma got five Oh, no, they, o o no not six. Oklahoma. But are, 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 South Carolina. Right. Texas. Are y'all understanding this thing? Those were the five. So, th this is... Literally, this comes straight from uh, the information that I have right here comes from a website. You can look it up for yourself called prisonpolicy.org. Policy yeah, remember that. All right. So this is real. But this is definitely non-biblical. Mm. I mean, you, you tell me based upon what we said. Is, is that fair labor? No, it's not. And so and then let's take a look at how this impacts people okay so first of all and you asked you know some of the we talked about some of the jobs okay they were laundry groundskeeping food service and other types of work um, the in-state owned businesses or correctional indus industries let me make sure that you understand what this is all right these are businesses that produce goods and provide services that are sold to government agencies many times at discount. Okay. So, and so the revenues they generate help to fund those positions. So, then we also have the jobs outside the facility, like work release, work camps, community work centers, which are few, and then jobs in private business. That's, um, those are a, sm a very small number of incarcerated people work for businesses that contract with correctional agencies. All right, through the PIE program. So, now, but, and again, and it says companies must pay local prevailing ages, wages for those, um, for, for those jobs, up, but up to 80% of those earnings can be deducted for various fees. Mm. So now, let's even get deeper, all right? So, you got the people in prison who are working, and then you have the situation where, listen to this, all right? The value of a dollar, all right, and listen to this. The question of wages paid for prison labor is an important one, especially when we consider the relative cost of fees charged and things sold to incarcerated people. The value of a dollar is different when you earn pennies per hour. Mm -hmm. In Colorado, for example, it costs an incarcerated woman two weeks' wages to buy a box of feminine products. Maybe more if there's a shortage. Saving up for a $10 phone card would take almost two weeks for an incarcerated person working in a Pennsylvania prison. Are, are y'all seeing this thing here? And so you have many people in prison who are going without personal hygiene products because they can't afford. Are, are, are y'all understanding this thing here? And so then, in addition, by making so little, listen to this, making it hard for incarcerated people to earn real money hurts their chances of success when they're released, too. With little or no savings, how can they possibly afford the immediate cost of food, housing, health care, and transportation? They can't make anything to save anything. What about child support and supervision fees? And it says people with felony convictions are often ineligible for government benefit programs like welfare and food stamps. And they face barriers to finding stable housing and employment. And they might leave prison with just a bus ticket and $50 of gate money. So now they're returning destitute. Mm -hmm. Are, are y'all understanding this thing? 
And so it's a wonder that the rate of recidivism is so high, because then we know they're not properly prepared to go out. And so, and, and some of you might be like, oh, well, that's the prison. But you got to realize that's our brothers and sisters. Even if they made mistakes, some of us made mistakes. You know, to be honest, you know, there's some things that we probably have done that we just didn't get caught for, that we could have been incarcerated for. Even if you're being real, you want to get real technical, how about every time you sped over the limit? <laughs> All right. Now, so, are, are, are y'all with me? Yeah, I mean. So, let, let's continue on. Y'all want to continue on? Yeah. All right. So, that was the prisons. Let's go to our next topic, or where we see this. What about, you know, you also have your slumlord, the slum landlord. They own all this property. And yet, are gouging you with the prices, and then don't even fix it up. Hmm. Okay. Then let's talk about something else. What about our rural or agricultural areas? Because a lot of times we think, you know, especially being here in Portsmouth, other areas, we think when we think poor, we're conditioned to think urban poor. Mm -hmm. But I did some research on that as well. I told you I did some research. Been doing some research, y'all. Okay, so and do, 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 do. Yeah, let me go down to okay, here. We go. All right, where is the? No, don't tell me where did it move to. Hold up, I gotta find it. Y'all, I'm sorry. It's right here. Um. Oh, it's at the top. Okay, sorry. All right, here you go. Listen to this. 9% of Virginia residents lack health insurance. This is uh, 2017. All right. So according to the USDA Economic Research Service, the average per capita income for Virginia residents in 2018, and I'm just talking about Virginia right now, y'all. You can go over any of the states and see what's up. But the average per capita income for Virginia residents was 57000 although rural per capita income was 39000 all right. Based on 2018 data, listen to this. The poverty rate in urban areas of Virginia is 9.8%. You know what it is in rural Virginia? 17.2%. All right. In urban areas, 9.6% of the population percent. 9.6% have it graduated high school. In rural areas, 17.7. Are, are, are y'all seeing this thing here? The unemployment rate in rural Virginia is 3.7%, while in urban Virginia it's 2.9%. That's that's serious, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and look, I decided to do a little bit of research again, a little more. And I, just, I said, you know what? How much do farm workers mm -hmm. make? Okay. Based on a recent survey, um, farm workers work 42 hours a week on average and earn $7 per hour on average. But the average varies. So, for example, if you've been working there for a long time, you know, if you've been with them, then you earn more than other workers. But if you've been with an employer for a year or less, then you earn an average of six seventy six per hour. Mm. So, to really put this in perspective, the average income of crop workers, y'all want to guess? And, and we enjoy, you know, good produce, right? Good prices. But we don't realize. What's the, take a guess at the average income of crop workers. Probably, don't Google it. Just guess. 18 to 20,000 a year. All right, so 18 or, to 20. Or what, 14. What, is that 14? the year? 
Is that you trying to see how much a okay. year? Ten to twelve thousand dollars. So they don't have to pay the crop workers. They don't have to pay these people minimum wage. They just pay them whatever. And fifteen to seventeen thousand dollars for, for a family. For for the whole family. For a family. So to give you an idea, the federal poverty line is ten thousand dollars for an individual, and twenty two thousand for a family of four. A four. Mm -hmm. That's the that's, that's the federal, federal. minimum. That was in two thousand and nine. So. What? So to help us understand. Well, that was a long time ago. So and, and, and if we notice, all you got to do is take a trip, you know, and I did some research even, you know, down into, you can go into uh, the eastern shore of Virginia. Mm -hmm. And you'll see and what they have there. They have a lot of migrant workers. They have migrant worker camps where they have people that come and they just come just to work. And try to send some money back to their family if they can. This is the real world state. Mm -hmm. The condition of things that are going on right now. Then I decided to do some other research, y'all. <laughs> I was on a research stand. I was, I was going. I was getting it today. I decided to research abroad. Y'all know, how, how many of y'all likes getting those nice, you know, nice clothes and stuff like that? Yeah, of course. But where is that made? In China. Okay. <laughs> or? Indonesia. Indonesia, Malaysia. Mm -hmm. But those aren't necessarily all the nicest clothes. I mean, you can go to Walmart and everything is made somewhere else. But... And right. the clothes are super cheap. And so, but here's the thing. What I want us to understand, and I want to read something for you. I did a little bit of study, and I did just to, came upon one thing that um, happened to catch my interest in Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. So, and I'm just going to tell, tell just the story in the interest of time. All right? Can I read a little short story to y'all? Mm hmm all right, here you go. This is a, a young person. DJ, how old are you? 12. 12. Okay, I want you to keep this in mind. All right. Young lady by the name of Bilkis Begum. Or Begum. Bilkis Begum was barely 12 years old when she began working in a Dhaka garment factory in Bangladesh. My parents didn't want me to leave home and come to work here but we had no money, she says. I was the oldest and I felt responsible. So I came with my uncle to work here. The daughter of a cycle driver from a village, a hundred kilometers from the Bangladeshi capital, she left school to support her four younger brothers. From 8 a.m. to 7 p.m., she sold shirts and trousers at a factory supplying Western High Street. Brands. She lives alongside hundreds of other workers in a tin roof shack, 10 minutes walk from the factory on Dhaka's crowded and chaotic outskirts. The hours have always been long, but as I got older, the work got harder. I was given more and more difficult work, she says. Under Bangladeshi law, garment factories can only employ workers aged at least 14 and those aged 14 to 18 can work for a maximum of five hours a day. When I was younger, every time the inspectors came, I would be ordered to leave the factory or they would hide me and the other underage workers somewhere no one would see, mm -hmm. says Bilkis, who is now 17. Still earning less than 6,000 taka a month, Bilkis is proud to have been able to support her family for so long. My plan is to work until I get married, she says, with a tired smile at the end of another long day's work. Mm. When I get married, I don't want to work anymore. I just want to relax and enjoy life. Now, how much did I say that she makes per month? Six, six thousand taka. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. This is after working for several years now. She's how old? She was 17. 17. Was Taka in USD? Exactly. Was Taka in, in US dollars? Excellent question, DJ. $70. What? A what? A week? Month. A month. Well, um, I'm guessing it doesn't cost as much to lose. No, 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 no. no. Think about this. $70 a month. So she was making two dollars and seven dollars a month. Well, that's even if she was working every day. Right. Ugh. That's what she makes per month. And how much is a year? Just for us to be able to right. walk around in our nice clothes. A year. Are, are, are y'all understanding this thing? And and you can take a look. And again, what are we? looking at we're looking at the verse in James chapter 5 y- y'all didn't know we could go this deep did y'all well, y'all know y'all been in here for a while but let's look at this let me go back to the verse indeed the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields which you kept back by fraud cry out. And the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of Sabah. Wow. So, thoughts or comments before we continue? $70 a month? <laughs> That's 840 a year. Um, working 8 to 7? 8 to 7. This is and literally, think about it. That's when she started as a child. Mm. Mm. So, uh, I just want us to, you know, give us a little perspective here. Yeah, and you can take a look at that. You know, you can do, do some research and, and find out some of these wonderful stories. You know, you see, you know, this ain't just something I'm making up. You know, you know me. You know, I do some research. All right. Now, let's continue on. Uh, any other questions or comments before we continue on for a second? Now, just to think and put things in perspective then. So, we have people who are intentionally, and this is, this is no secret, you know, American business owners, manufacturers, many times will do what? They'll outsource Mm -hmm. manufacturing to different countries because it's cheap. And so then what they do is they'll go ahead. Oh, wow. Yes, sir. Mike Jordan said, wow, so sobering. May God have mercy and may justice come. Thanks, Darren. Have to go now. Thank you, Mike. But this stuff is, is, is so real. Can you imagine and seeing what's happening? And so, again, look what the Word is saying. Look what God is saying about this stuff. So as we continue on, um, it says, And the cries of the reapers have what? Reached the ears of the Lord of Sabah. And so that means that we got people who are are tired of this. Mm -hmm. And so what are they doing? They're crying out. And they're crying out to God and they're praying and they're asking God, God, can you do something? Can you help us out? Can you assist? And it says the prayers have reached the ears of the Lord of Sabah. And the word there for Sabah is a, a word of Hebrew origin. And what it means is of armies. God, the military, the Lord of armies, has heard their cry. And so what is he going to do? He's going to avenge the poor who've been exploited. Mm. Verse 5. Listen to this. You have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. You have fattened your hearts as in a day of slaughter. You have condemned. You have murdered the just. He does not resist you. Wow. You've gotten rich and fat. <laughs> Watch this. You've lived on earth of pleasure and luxury. You you balling. You balling out. 
You got everything. You got your Gucci, your Louis, your Prada, your every other little fancy name in there. You fatten your hearts and eating as much as you want. You got lobster, shrimp, steak. You got whatever you want. As in a day of slaughter. So you've gotten rich and fat, but really, instead of just living high off the hog, you, just like the hog, are being fattened mm -hmm. for your own day of slaughter. That's not me. Wow. That's crazy. Is, is this deep? Mm -hmm. This is God speaking through his wonderful son, James. For our, from our dear brother, James, speaking these prophetically... Um, Harsh, poignant, direct words, piercing. And then listen to this, verse 6. You have condemned. You have murdered the just. He does not resist you. What does this mean to y'all? What's this sound like to y'all? You've done this to the poor people, and they don't even try to fight back. Mm. Well, they can't because where else are they going to go? Mm. Mm. Serious, isn't it? All right. So, uh, y'all didn't think it was going to be y'all looking at outside. Oh, it's going to be a nice little light, sunny message. Nice and sunny outside. It's rarely a nice sunny message. <laughs> you said what, honey? It's rarely a nice sunny message. It is rarely a nice sunny message, but it's the word. Can I read the message version? Uh, actually, uh, uh, actually, you you can because yeah. that is exactly what I was about to read next. Well, you, read it you, you want me to read? It doesn't matter. Okay. Because this this one, I mean, that broke it down, but this right here is yeah. just like you can't not understand this one right here. <laughs> like. And, all right, so it's so easy that a caveman can understand. <laughs> and the final word to you, arrogant rich. Take some le lessons in lament. You'll need buckets for the tears when the crash comes upon you. Your money is corrupt and your fine clothes stink. <laughs> your greedy luxuries are a cancer in your gut, destroying your life from within. You thought you were piling up wealth. What you've piled up is judgment. All the workers you've exploited and cheated cry out for judgment. The groans of the workers you used and abused are a roar in the ears of the master avenger. You've looted the earth and lived it up. But all you'll have to show for it is a fatter than usual corpse. In fact, what you've done is condemn and murder perfectly good persons who stand there and take it. Is that not so good? Mm. So, thoughts, comments, responses after today's message. Um, what's today? Is today? Are we in March? Yes, this yes. Is March the 1st. March. Yay. Okay. What I'm thinking is pretty much what we said earlier. How long has the Bible been out? Like, how long? <laughs> how long have this scripture? Like, this passage was written well in over 2000. This is 2020, well over 2000 years ago. Okay. So, what we're saying is like eight, the early 1900s. This was there. Mm -hmm. That's my thoughts. That was it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody else could put two and two together. But, but you know what? They probably didn't have. The message in the news. Oh, 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 please. But you mean to tell me they can't? Look, I can go to King James. The Bible is yeah, a very large book. Do. I'm about to go to King James. Go to King James and see what it says in King James. Was there anyone that they had? The, the Bible is action. a very large book. So violence. it is very easy to please. pick and choose oh, what you want to, um, Put in. to, to, to teach. do. I mean, people have been doing this for years. They, they pick and choose do it. what yeah. they want. And then they twist it around and make it like, oh, yes, we are the ones that are in charge. We were the, you know, in the Bible, they had slaves. Well, yeah, they did, but they had fairness with their slaves. You know, like they had indentured servants. And so 
after on the seventh year, it was a year, year of jubilee, and all the slaves went free. So why we gotta be slaves for all these years? You know, it's not because it's not Never really. Um, they did not read the Bible, and if they did read it, they did not apply it the way that they should have applied it. And, and watch, just just you know. And, and, and answer what you said by right saying, look, I'm going to read from the King James. It's, it's, What's up, Jonathan it's the same. Simes? It's the same. It says, listen, John, uh, James 5 and 4, Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you, kept back by fraud, mm -hmm. crying. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabah. You have to live in prayer when you listen to me. Wow. Plain as day. It's been there. Right there in the book of James. Yep. Look, we, we quote everything else from James. Mm. Alright, so other thoughts, comments, responses. What about y'all online checking this out? Any thoughts, responses? I think Keith should read uh listen to this service. Mm hmm Amen. So, any anything else? J Faith? I think the Bible's too violent. <laughs> I mean, the, the world is violent. I mean, well, this is nothing. I mean, wasn't that, yes. there, wasn't there that one time where Jezebel fell out of her window and then, who was it? I think it was Elisha that came on trampling over her with a horse and then dancing, I think, eating her food, then running back out. So, but yeah, you're right. I mean, the Bible is violent, but it's reflective of many of the things that goes yeah. on. And so, you know, it's written in a way that we can understand it. You know, we have to be able to see. We have to be able to realize this stuff has been here. And so all I'm doing is I'm drawing, drawing attention to it. I'm just bringing the, the microscope on it for a little while. Mm -hmm. The magnifying glass so we can see this. I'm putting this on a trending topic for a moment. Mm -hmm. So you all can see. It, it's in there. I'm just bringing it to trend so you all see. And that's why it's important for us as believers to not just to continue this immature practice of um, a, a crumb a day or just going on what people feed us. Because one of the things we have to do is we have to study to show ourselves approved. We are a learned population. We're not, it's not this isn't back in the olden days where only the scribes could read. We, many of us, you know, our children know how to read. Mm -hmm. And so we have no excuse. So what we need to do is we need to learn to read and study the Bible. We read every other little post on timelines. We'll open it up and see how many things. We'll click on the link and read this article or that. Mm -hmm. But yet, why won't we read the Bible in context? Why won't we read a couple of chapters at a time? That's why what I'm doing here in P-Town Fresh is so important. You know, I don't do this to highlight me, but I do this to highlight the word. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, I, I want to highlight the word and let y'all see, look, this word, his, his word is tangible. It's attainable. We can read this thing. We can study it. We can understand it. We can live it by it. We can apply it. And that's the thing. We've held the word of God on this shelf and it's like, oh, only the those in the secret society can understand its secrets. No. This is for all. And it needs to apply to all. It does apply to all, whether we choose to or not. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, let's get ready to pray. Can I pray? No, no, no I'll pray. This Thank you, though. Hallelujah, Lord God. Father, we just thank you and bless your name for this day that you've given us. Thank you for this lesson and message, God, and the richness of this word today. Uh, we realize, God, that this word was harsh and piercing, but sometimes we need to be brought back to reality. God, many times, you know, we forget just because it's not in front of us. The poor, the incarcerated, those who are subjected to inferior working conditions, God, many times we forget that. But God, help us not to forget. Help us not to forget the sense of what's right is right. Father, as I look and I read this, uh, I look at the many 
you consider the many wealthy landowners. In the Bible, many people were made rich off of owning land. And today is the same as well. But in addition, we have people who manufacture things, who have factories, plants. And Father, many of them get rich off of the backs of others, by standing on the backs of others. And sometimes the hardest labor, even if we think of, and we don't even just have to think of the slavery, we can think of the, the Chinese immigrants who helped to build the railroads. God, this thing is, is no respecter of persons. So Father, we ask that you'll help us to do right. For those of us who desire to be pro prosperous, and wealthy, Father, let us not compromise our principles in the least. Let us realize that we can be both be profitable and be honorable at the same time and righteous. And we thank you. And we give you glory. In Jesus. Thank you all for checking us out today. Everybody that checked us out, um, multiple people <coughs> checked in. I would read the list, but um, I don't even think I have the full list. Uh, so, but thank you all so much, especially with considering all the craziness that we have with the technical difficulties and everything. Thank you. Um, we'll be back again next Sunday, Lord willing. Um, we hope you'll be able to join us as we continue on. Um, the next couple of verses so it's, it's no secret if you want to know where we're going to go next um, it would be James chapter 5 and the next thing we're going to be looking at is verse 7 through 8 and maybe even up to 12 we'll see so I encourage you you know in the week days to come go ahead and begin to study your head let's look at it read it meditate on it it's not a secret. You know, you ain't going to steal my thunder. We good. <laughs> it ain't about me. It's about the word. My prayer is that I wish everybody would be able to start studying this stuff ahead of time. Amen? Amen. All right. So love y'all. Um, I think we got a lot of application to go from here. You know, wow. So rich. Thank you, Lord. Love y'all. Be blessed. Make sure y'all share the link. Share the stream. You see, oh, we got a response. We will certainly reap what we have sown. Lord, give us more compassion for the poor and those in need. If it wasn't for your grace, we could amongst those who would suffer unjustly. Thanks, Pastor Darren. What up? Thanks, Pastor Darren, for this profound and sobering message. Hey, Sabrina. So, anybody checking it out, make sure y'all go back and uh, check this one out and share the stream. You know, we need to understand about these slave wages, slave labor. Amen? Amen. Love y'all. Be blessed.